Editing in Lightroom can be really daunting, so we're going to break down the step-by-step -step process to go from this to this. I'm going to take you through the whole process of correcting the flat raw image to the final graded JPEG. So open up Lightroom, import your photos, and select the one that you want to edit. So I'm going to choose this one here that I took in Transmitter Park in Brooklyn, and we're going to be using this photo for this video. So at the moment the horizon is looking a little bit wonky, so what I'm going to do is just go down to Geometry, and click Rotate, and just use the grid, and that's nice and straight now. So the first thing I do in Lightroom is just make sure the image is straight. What's the first thing that you do in Lightroom when you edit an image? Let us know in the comments below. So now we're going to start with the light panel. I need to make sure that it's nice and exposed properly. So we're going to jump in and change all these settings now. So when taking this photo, I wanted to expose for the sun as I want to kind of create a backlit silhouette of the building and the people. But I am going to decrease the contrast a little bit so I can get a slightly more detail out of the people, but not too much so that the image starts to look flat. I'm also completely going to drop the highlights just to try and get as much information as I can back from them while bumping up the shadows to get a little bit more back from them. But again, for this one, I'm not going to bump the shadows up too much as it'll start to look flat and we don't want that. We still want to keep a true black point in the image. I'm going to do the same again with the black and the white sliders, but less aggressive here as otherwise it'll start looking too edited and have those weird looking circles around the sun and we don't want that. So already we can see a really big difference here. So this is the original and then when we click to show what we've done with the light panel so far, we've got a lot more detail back in the highlights and the shadows and we're just going to carry on with the edit now. So we're going to go straight down to tone curves. The tone curves can be a scary beast, but they're actually a really simple and useful tool to take your images to the next level. I tend to look at the tone curves in two parts. So first you have the white tone curve, which is a general light, and this is another way to add more contrast into the image. And secondly, you have the RGB channels, and this I kind of think is like your first initial step into color grading, as you can manipulate the red, green, and blue channels throughout the image and really start to change the mood and the atmosphere of the picture. If you're manipulating one of the three RGB sliders, you probably should look to manipulate all three unless you're going for a really stylized image because if you do one and not the others, it can look a bit funky. So I'll just show you a bit of an example of that. So if I just do the red one there, bump it up, it's starting to look really red. If we just leave the rest of it, I don't think it'd look that good in the final edit in the end. When we're doing the RGB adjustments, I like to kind of make the same edit on all three channels. So we're still adding contrast and manipulating the colors. And there can be a slight difference here and there, but we want to make sure that we're doing similar adjustments to all three sliders. We're going to make an S curve on all three, fairly similar. At first, it can almost look too over edited. So right now I've made that edit and as you can see, the oranges look quite saturated. So what I'm going to do is drop down to the color panel just take that saturation down to about minus 35. So now we've got a lot of contrast in the image. But as we've taken the saturation away, we're gonna go more in depth into color grading now with the HSL sliders. So the main colors we have in this image are clearly the warmer tones with the sun and it being sunset. Let's start there by bumping up the saturation on the orange and dropping the hue a little bit so it's a richer shade. For the yellows, we should drop everything slightly as we want to see the sun and also make it a richer shade. And as you can see there, just by dropping the luminance, you can see that nice ray just coming in around the top of the person's head there. So now there's not actually too much color in the rest of the image, but I still want to kill off a slight bit of the blue here and just drop the saturation on it. But other than that, let's just quickly finish the HSL sliders off so we can go onto the color grading panel. So now we're at the color grading panel. And again, this looks intimidating, but it's really simple and it really help you develop your style as a photographer. So what the color grading panel essentially does is create a gradient of the colors that you select across the image. So if we take this plain black and white gradient here, so if we add color grade onto the image and we put blue in the shadows and select orange for the highlights, you'll see that the shadows of this gradient have turned blue and the highlights of this gradient have turned orange. Know that the true black and white points of the gradient are still black and white as they cannot be changed. It just simply affects every single light value in between true black and true white. We can also add an even stronger gradient by adding something to the midtones. Then below we have the blending and the balance sliders. 
blending allows you control how smooth the shift is from the color of the shadows to the highlights. And the balance slider is how evenly distributed the shadows and the highlight color grade is. So if we go all the way to the left, it's more heavily weighted towards the shadows. And we go all the way to the right, it's more heavily weighted towards the highlights. So let's go back to our image now. And I tend to start with the shadows. So choose the color that you think looks good. So I'm gonna go with a blue shadow. And again, I'd say less is more with the color grading panel. You don't wanna to go too extreme because then it'll start to look over edited and can really kill off the image. So just a little bit of blue. In this case, I'm gonna go with complementary colors for this. So I've gone with blue in the shadows and I'm gonna go with an orange or yellow highlight. So it's a really nice contrast in the color grade. So I think that looks great. So if you wanna make the image warmer or cooler, you can go over to this four circle here and make a global adjustment. So I wanna make this slightly more warmer again. Add a little bit more red to it. I think that looks good. This just gives your image that little bit of extra flavor that can really help you develop your style as a photographer and keep your edits more uniform. Will you start incorporating the color grading panel into your editing workflow? Let me know in the comments below.